Hi everyone and welcome to today's event. Thank you for joining us. I'm Laura Dillon from MS Dynamics World and we are here today for a session all about unleashing shipping management in Dynamics 365 Finance and Operations. Our presenter is Steve Williamson with Blue Jay Solutions and it is my pleasure to welcome him here with us today. As we get started, please know that we do welcome your questions. You can feel free to enter them in at any time during his presentation into the Q&A box that you'll see there on your, on your menu. And the Steve and his team will be reviewing those and getting back to you directly. So uh, without any further delay, I'm gonna hand things off to Steve to get us started. Great, thank you very much and hello to everybody. And I appreciate you guys taking the time out and listening into this webinar. What we're going to focus on today is talk a little bit about who we are um, and the partnership that we have between Blue Jay and NMB. And then we'll go through, of course, some of the solution and some of those key components. Um, we'll touch a, a little bit on many of them, um, but there will be some that we don't touch on today. But please don't hesitate to ask those questions and, get, and let us know if you've got any further questions on those. And then we have removed the case studies, but we could review case studies also if we want to one on one. So let me give you a, a little introduction to the to Blue Jay and NMB. Blue Jay has been around for a few years and we really are focusing in on supply chain solutions. And when I talk about supply chain solutions and you think about it, it's really around the transportation of that. Meaning that we help move goods, whether you're a freight forwarder, whether you're a broker, or whether you're a shipper or a manufacturer and you need help moving things within your supply chain, we have best of breed software solutions available in the marketplace with many customers, thousands of customers using them. What NMB recognizes is that within the D365 AX world, that they would like to take those solutions and expose those and make them readily available to anyone leveraging those platforms, those Microsoft platforms. NMB have been focused on the Microsoft world for many years and been an important partner to Microsoft. And what they've done specifically, which you'll see today within the D365 world, is taken and created many solutions and features that are really bolted in to that user experience within D365, giving the, the user the ability to just, so to speak, click a button or pack something within D365 and then get that output. So they've taken some of the BlueJay solutions in front ended them in D365, you know, giving that strength and that best of breed capability right embedded in that world. We've been excited about this. We have many customers that have jumped on board, both in the AX and D365 platforms, and have taken advantage of what NMB have done with their expertise on the solutions. So without any further ado here, let me jump right into the solutions themselves. So as I've talked about, NMB have really taken those and embedded that. And that's an important note. When, when you look at it, you're gonna see D365 workflows and screens. Um, and that's the strength of what NMB have done is they've really exposed the engine um, that BlueJay focuses on and giving that user experience that I described a couple of times. This is a certified solution, meaning that it can be downloaded from the Microsoft App Source but when we break it apart, we kind of break it into these three main areas of capabilities. We break it into a packing and shipping workflow. Some people might remember this as a parcel, but it really does support LTL extremely well. So it should be noted that it's both parcel and LTL. The other important note, as, it, as it's described, it will work off of both the WMS and WHS. So no matter which solution or module you have decided to go with, uh, this particular solution can work for you. Of course, there are slightly different capabilities on what it will do with each one of those, um, but it will work on both of those. And then I've talked about the other things, the bolt-on capabilities. Um, I described just a slide or two ago how they really taken and expanded that into D365. And some of these, as I described, we'll talk about and some we won't. But bear in mind that when you think about shipping and transportation specifically, you can things, think of things like invoices and international documents and consolidation. These are all the things that NMB have done of really expanding into and giving a full blown suite of capabilities around transportation embedded in D365. I'll also introduce you to the compliance screening. Um, this is an important component. A lot of people 
you know, ship things that might be sensitive and subsequently have to have a compliance screening program. And then the other piece is, uh, when you think about transportation, some people need beyond the parcel and LTL world. They need, you know, ocean, they need rail as it's described. So we also provide a full blown TMS and NMB have also created a nice integration into that TMS. The workflow with a full-blown TMS is different than it is with a parcel and LTL. And those that need a true TMS understand that of how a TMS works versus the parcel and LTL, which you'll see. So again, I'll take a slide or two at the end and we'll introduce that to you also. So let's jump right into it and talk about it. When we refer to packing and shipping, we are referring to those in one entity. Um, and when you think about packing, preparing the shipment, you can kind of read down through all of these areas and get an idea of that. You can do something that's very quick, essentially, you know, scan in that document and get everything and pack it. And then you can break it down into a variety of options thereafter. What I mean by a variety of options, you can see those, is, well, maybe as a, as a business, I don't need to actually scan things into a box. I just need to ship it. Well, in that case, you probably use the pack all and ship, what we refer to as the quick ship workflow. But if you are that person, it's maybe you have serialized or lot numbered your pharmaceutical company or a manufacturing of electronics where you need to capture serial numbers. Well, that serial lot number registration may be important to you. So we've tried to create you know, enough variety to have everyone cover in regards to how they actually need to pack and ship. And again, I use that pack and ship as a description of some people just need to ship, some people need to do both. And we're gonna walk through a couple screenshots and give you a little bit of an introduction to a few of these. To give you just a visual of what the actual packing workflow looks like, here's an example of that. It's a four quadrant screen to try to have it all on one screen, where again, you would put in your document ID. It's very commonly asked, well, can I scan my order number versus document ID? There are a few different options of how you can identify the order that you're working on. And that varies a little bit by WMS versus WHS, but you can have a, a few different ways to identify your shipment. And once you've brought in your shipment, you would then have your shipping information, like where I'm shipping to, what carrier, that's in that header shipment info. You of course would expose your line items. So what are your items to be packed? Anything up in the upper right are actually your boxes. And then the items in those boxes would be listed down in your lower right. So that's why I refer to as your four quadrant packing screen, where you have your header information, your items, your boxes, and then the items that are currently in those boxes. And then you'll see there's a variety of ways to actually drive that. When you actually do it in the real world, in a live demo, it's usually scanning in that document type, as I alluded to, right? You can have a few different ways to identify the order. And then you can pack all and then send the shipment. And then from an output perspective, once you've performed those actions, you would get what you would expect from an output meaning you would get your parcel labels. This is really where the Blue Jay compliance engine comes into play. So as you can see through those screenshots, I'm in D365. I'm working in what we refer to as our pack workbench. I send the shipment and then the output would be provided. And that output can have a variety of ways to actually be displayed. So obviously here in the, the presentation, I brought images to the screen and I, and I put those on the slide deck. But in the real world, you may have those printed directly to a label printer, or maybe you're having your, your packing slip come out on your laser jet printer. So there's a, a variety of ways to kind of control what we refer to as output. And again, that output being both labels and reports are typically the, the two types of outputs that you would see from a solution like ours. Now, the, the Blue J parcel in LTL engine is really behind the scenes. It is an engine, as I've described it a few things. So NMB have taken that strength of that engine and exposed it as you've seen in those previous slides in that D365 area. When we think about it from a value perspective and you looked at all those packing workflows, it's really about having those streamlined and embedded in D365. I don't have to, so to speak, shell out into a 
a separate application to perform any type of shipping or to perform any type of packing and shipping. I can stay within the environment that I know, get trained on that, so to speak, pack all, click those buttons, send shipment, and then drive it. The, when we talk about streamline, we are really referring to a streamline. When you look at standard WHS or WMS workflows and what it takes to actually pack something and then ultimately ship by using either, a, let's say, a third party or a carrier provided systems, the amount of steps can be in the dozens, meaning 20, 30, 40 steps to actually complete a full shipment from start to finish. Whereas in the screenshot that I showed, it literally can be a three-step shipping process. Scan your document ID, pack it all, and send a shipment. So we have worked to where we have successfully streamlined workflows going from 30 plus steps down to three to achieve the same thing. The other component here when I talk about the value is really letting the data drive as it describes. And, and to kind of understand what that means is that you don't have to rely on the user to remember to click here, do that, expose this, do this. You can have everything within D365. You can have that, we'll talk about international, we're gonna talk about hazardous. You can have all of the data and let the data just feed the transaction or let the rule set speed the transaction so that you can, you know, if only five shirts can fit in a box, we'll just have the packing workflow know that. You don't have to have the user remember that. So you can truly let data determine how the transactions are being processed. So it's an important component and an important note to actually know. The other component is, of course, LTL. And as I've described, the engine is capable of both parcel and LTL processing. And when you th think about LTL, the things that change a little bit are, of course, how you package it. You may actually take boxes and pack in boxes and then take boxes and put those on pallets, which is what's referred to sometimes as palletized shipping or palletized shipment, as it's described in that first bullet. The other important component is bills of lading, um, right? You may need pro numbers. You may need pallet labels. Um, while it's just another level of transportation, right? It's a, it's a less than truckload versus parcel shipment. In this particular case, there is those nuances. The good thing is, is when it comes to LTL shipping, a lot of the carriers are very similar, meaning they all can take a bill of lading. They can all take a pallet label. You don't have to worry about that individuality and compliance that you do with the UPSs and the FedExs and the postals of the world. So the workflow that we were showing you earlier if you look at those screenshots a little bit closer, you'll see things that apply to pallets if you need to. Again, if you don't need LTL processing, no problem. You wouldn't use this area of it. You wouldn't have to configure those carriers that are associated with LTL, but if you do, then that can be part of that same packing workflow that I showed that screenshot on earlier to where you can actually drive and collect all of those boxes, create those pallets, and then ultimately produce the outputs that you see on the screen here. Hazardous processing, we were just talking about data a, a second ago and how you can have the data driving the user experience. Hazardous is a good, a good example of that. Um, when you think about shipping, when you think, so, think about the components and the areas of shipping, when you start going across borders, when you start going, excuse me, into hazardous areas, really the big difference is just data, right? You need to provide more data. So in regards to not only describing, of course, what it weighs and what's in it, if you've got hazardous, you have to get into things like DG um, units, unit values. You got to get into the dangerous goods classifications. And then, of course, you got to be able to produce the output. So when you think about carrier systems, and you, those are slightly different per carrier. So if you're shipping with FedEx, you may need an OP900 form. But if I'm shipping with UPS next day, AIR, let's say, or AIR, I might need an IATA form. So the strength of what NMB have done is they give you some setup tables and other, work, uh, and other areas within D365 to be able to collect the right data to then drive the Blue Jay shipping engine to produce the labels that are appropriate for the shipment and to produce the international, or in this case, hazardous DG forms, as I described earlier, OP900s or CFR49s or IATA forms. So, the automated workflows are still the same. You can still pack, you can still send the shipment, and it's really about the data behind it, as I've described now a few times, 
that gives the strength of the overall solution that NMB and BlueJay have provided to make it as seamless and as streamlined as possible. So if you think about all of the steps that are needed to do certain things, these are the areas where that strength really shines through. Now I'm going to switch gears a little bit and talk about order entry rating. So again, think about that engine and the and not only can it produce the outputs that we've been looking at earlier, right? The labels and the forms that we just showed you with hazardous, but often because it has those carriers set up, it also has all of those rates. So a common question is, well, what rates can get loaded or what rates can get uh, modified and, and seen and used? And the question, or the, excuse me, the answer is really whatever you want. And what I mean by that is when we're configuring the carriers, you have options of what type of rate tables you load. So subsequently, when you get into requiring and leveraging those rates in the D365 world, so if you're doing order entry rating, as it says here, or if you're doing rate shopping as part of a shipment, you can have the rates that you want be applicable to the process. So if it's your published rates or your negotiated rates, or maybe it's the book rates or list rates. So whatever is gets loaded, and it varies slightly by carrier and what they support, but that's what happens in the Blue Jay engine. And then what NMB have done is they've taken that, they make a call out to the solution, and then you can actually bring that rate shot back and expose those rates in the system. So if I you know, ask the system as to, hey, how should I ship this? It needs to, it's gonna ship today, it needs to be there tomorrow, it weighs this much, maybe it's got these dimensions, and you can see some of that through the, the screens, then we can bring back the actual values, and you can select that in the workflows within D365. So if, again, if you need things like order entry rating or rate shopping sometimes referred to, you can get that through the workflows that have been created. And when we think about that, that can be with a single carrier. <laughs> Some people negotiate rates with a, a single carrier and they're very happy and say, well, I've got it. I, I know I want to use FedEx or I know I want to use UPS or, or on track whatever that carrier may be that you know that you want to use, but maybe you don't know what's the right service to use. Maybe you need help with, it needs to be there tomorrow. And if I'm shipping from Dallas, let's say to Austin, Texas, what's the right service to use to get there overnight? And what's the cost of associated with those? So you can see through the screenshots, we've got multiple carriers and services there, but you can set it up to where maybe again, it's a single carrier and just a few services or it's multiple carriers and multiple services. The other important component is you can also configure what groupings you want. So do you want to look at just parcel rates? Do you want to look at parcel and LTL rates? So if you've got something that's a little bit larger and you need to be able to see some of that stuff, you can also do that. So it gives you some options as to what you get back and what ultimately you can see and provide to the solution. I say to the solution, to the user, right, in this particular case. So if we think about that and break that down into really what it what allows you to do, as I've described a little bit, right, I can easily access that. So I can have that embedded in my D365 and make that right selection when I want to, so that when it does get out to packing and shipping, maybe they don't have that option. They just execute on whatever's been predetermined when you did it, the other piece. As I've talked about, you can also shop when you want, right? You can hook those in and drive those and get the right pricing that you want. So you can you know, put that, I need to ship UPS ground and it's $10. Um, you can lock that in and, and make sure that's the costing that maybe you're passing on to your customer. So the rates are configurable as I described earlier. So whether I'm configuring list rates or I'm configuring negotiated rates, I can push those into the system and then I can drive that user experience through various carriers and services if I want them, giving you the most cost effective. Some people refer to that as rate shopping. Some people refer to that as service shopping. So it's really, whatever term is it's applicable, the way I break it down is that we can kind of configure the way you want and configure the rates that you want and then push those into the user experience within D365. The other piece, and I've talked earlier about international, right? Moving things across borders. 
one of the things that we strive for within the workflows that we've created with NMB and ourselves and D365 is trying to make everything as we can as frictionless. So whether I'm shipping a domestic shipping parcel or whether I'm shipping an LTL or whether I'm doing hazardous or now talking about international, we try to make it frictionless. And what we essentially mean by that is as easy as possible, right? That you don't have to worry about, well, did I do this or did I do that? You can let the data get set up in the system and let it get driven. And when you think about international crossing a border, we also try to think about these areas, right? So we, we break it down into filing. So when we look at filing, you can think about it with doing EEI, right, via the ACE portal. You know, so if you're doing an export out of the U.S. and you're requiring that filing for commodities over $2,500 or licensed, licensed goods, then we've got you covered. Um, when you think about things like UPS paperless commercial invoicing, again, we've got you covered. And the other piece that NMB have done is they've taken and recognized that maybe not all the data is, is in D365. So they've created extended tables to work to help collect that data. And again, as we've talked about value throughout, and I talk about let the data drive the workflow, this is what I'm stressing is that we can recognize that sometimes you don't want that user typing in at the point of packing and shipping, well, what's the commodity value? Or what's the HTS code? Uh, not only do you want not want to do that because it slows it down, but you don't want to do that because in some cases it may make a mistake. So subsequently, your, your goods may get held up or they may not be able to get filed appropriately through ACE if those aren't actually correct. So subsequently, what we've done is we try to make it as it described on the screen here, as frictionless as possible so that they can actually look at it, pack, ship, and out come and out happen these types of things behind the scenes. So documents would come out and you know the a, um, AES transaction through ACE would actually be um, uh, provided automatically and the ITN number would come back and be printed on the document. So it is about making it as frictionless as possible, but the way we can do that is through hard work of setting up these tables and these rules and driving the user experience so that it can just seamlessly flow. The other piece is I want to dive a little bit deeper down into documents. When we think about international, we can think about documents. And it's always a common question of, well, can you support all of my documents? And I always love that kind of description, all of my documents. Well, what does that mean? Because documents can be, uh, can be many things to many people in regards to the documents are often very specific to, yes, you're doing an international, you need a commercial invoice. But, you know, how is it packaged? What is in the cartons? Where are you going? What mode are you going? <clears throat> Where's the country of manufacture? All of these types of, of questions and the answers specifically to those questions are what come into play when it ultimately um, comes down to what documents do I need? What NMB have done is they've taken and really extended this and created, as you see on the screen here, a variety of things. Yes, documents in general. So there's a bunch of documents that we can support but there's then the handling of those documents. I always think that the document creation is only one small area of it. Then it's what do I do with these documents? Which documents are applicable to the shipment? So we can create these profiles that can be configured in D365 to help drive what documents are applicable to what shipments. So sometimes it's as simple as, well, I'm going to this country. You know, when I go to Brazil, I need these three documents. Or when I go to China, I need these eight documents. So it can be maybe based upon the destination, or maybe it's actually carriers as it's described. So there's the ability to create these profiles that really you can wrap these three documents, these four documents, or this one document maybe, and then have the system automatically produce that, so to speak, as you're processing. It goes back to frictionless, it goes back to streamlined workflows, and some of the things that I've described earlier to help make sure that we can make it as easy as possible. So when you're thinking about, again, the shipments and the movement of shipments, well, if you're listening to this and you're only shipped domestically in the US, well, then this screen, I apologize, is not applicable to you. 
But if you do need to cross that border, you got to go into Canada or you got to go to Brazil or Germany, or maybe you're a global company and you're shipping from Canada or you're shipping from Germany, then this may be more appropriate to you in regards to thinking about what documents are applicable. Uh, we do recognize we may not have every document out there. In fact, we know that. So subsequently, we could add or consider adding documents down the road, but it would have to be a discussion, right? Let's talk about what it is because it's one thing to create a template and to have the ability to produce, quote unquote, a document, but it's another thing to have the data. And it goes back to the importance of the data is making sure that, you know, whatever feeds that document is available, you know, either through data that's already preloaded and used in the shipment or through the screens that the user can type that in. But either way, you need the data, right, to drive the document. So sometimes people think, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, you just create that document. Well, you break that document down and you start looking at the fields on there and you're like, well, how do we, you know, get this field? Because this is a value field and it comes from a combination of other things. So it's it's an important conversation to make sure that we don't want to mislead anyone into thinking, quote unquote, we support all their documents. But at the same time, we do feel we've got a, a wide variety of documents that are available in the solution and can, and can be produced as you're executing shipments to ultimately provide as, as best we can the frictionless processes that we're talking about around parcel, LTL, and specifically right now, international shipping. Now, when we kind of think about this, I've been focusing right on shipping. Uh, we've talked about hazardous and international. Uh, we talked about the packing workflows, right? The line item packing and cereal and all these different types of packing workflows. But when you think about shipping, you can also kind of peel back. I like to use the analogy of peeling back the onion. You can kind of peel back a few layers and think about a few, excuse me, a few layers and think about all of the other areas. You know, something as simple as blind shipping, you know, could be extremely important to you. So if you're shipping on behalf of some other company, so I'm fulfilling orders, I'm a, I'm a supplier for someone else. So subsequently, I might need their particular, you know, company name and address on the label, even though it's coming from my facility, you know, everything's going to go out here. Maybe I've got it throw that, that uh, company name up there in the upper part of that label. So you need to have something as blind shipping. So what we try to recognize is that it is important to think beyond just the standard pack ship workflows. You do have to get into things like voiding. And how does that apply if I've already posted you know, the packing slip and already done my steps in D365? How does that apply to me? And if I need to void the shipment ultimately and get rid of that UPS label, um, how can I reship it quickly? So uh, the NMB folks have really taken some time and thought beyond, again, as it describes, beyond just that packing and shipping workflows. And you can kind of see those out here, settlement all the way to accrual journals. APO, FBO is a good example. Uh, you know, the strength of the APO, FBO, if you think about, it, well, why is that? Why is that called out? Well, you also need the forms associated with APO, FBO. So you may need that 2976 or 2976A form. Also with APO, FBO, only certain carriers support those destinations, being that those are military bases and they're shipped domestically as a, as a shipment. So the, the strength here in the, in the message here is just to think that we have thought beyond and we have thought about some of those other areas in regards to the handling of you know, let's say the, the UPS invoice or doing special services. I talked about hazardous earlier, right? But maybe you just need adult signature. Uh, you're shipping alcohol or you're shipping a, a high end, high value electronic and you want to get adult signature. You want to make sure you can have all of those other areas. And these are things that you can set up. You can set the, the flags and the data elements within D365 and have that provide, as I've described, a frictionless process, right? a quick and easy shipping process, giving users the ability to, so to speak, click, 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 out comes my label, or scan, 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 out comes my label. And that is an important component that I haven't talked about is that we have also designed the workflow to be driven off of scans. So when you're physically out in a warehouse, typically you do wanna just kind of scan this and then scan this size maybe and scan this and boom, out comes my outputs. You know, my label comes out, my label printer. So the design of the workflow that the NMB and the team have done is try to think of that user and try to maximize 
the steps that they're doing today so that in the end they can have one, two, three steps versus not exaggerating 20 or 30 steps as I've described earlier. I've talked about data, I've talked about shipping, but there's also the value of the reports. And I think about the reports, not the international reports that we were just talking about, but now customer reports, right? You wanna break down the data. There's a lot of strength in being able to take what you already know and just break it up into components that, that give you visibility into what's going on. And when you think about it, um, a lot of customers negotiate with carriers using carrier provided data. So they're sitting down with their parcel carrier and talking about their contracts and talking about what they're doing. And more often than, than not, they're relying on that carrier to tell them, oh, this is what you've shipped last year. Here, let me show you what you've done. But if you peel it back again, that onion, you've got that data. You know what you've shipped. You know the value of uh, you know five bucks or ten bucks of, of what you thought that it should have been. You know what zones you've shipped to. So that's in D365. And what NMB can do is they can work with you to try to again peel that onion back and expose that data so that you can really understand your transportation. Um, you know, it's a it's not uncommon, as I described earlier, for someone to, to really rely on someone else to tell them what's going on. And what we've tried to do is to say, no, you know a lot. You've got a lot there. Just let's educate you on how to take that data so that you can represent it not only to your own business, but also against carrier negotiations and other things outside your business. It's not to say you're going to go out and get, you know, half the rates that you get. I wouldn't want to misrepresent it that way. But it just enables you to feel more empowered to understand, as it describes, you know, who's shipping what, when, and how. So. You know, am I, am I doing a lot of air shipping? And if I am doing a lot of air shipping to where? Where am I shipping all those air shipments? And you can you know, start to do a little analysis to determine is there some course change that you should make or not? So thinking about that and then giving that data back to your, your business, right? Whether it's the logistics manager and they're the only one that really cares about it or maybe it's the, you know, CFO asking about transportation spend and how are we doing it and what's the breakdown of it and is there any savings that we can have there? You know, what's the average cost? You know, when you think about, you know, three boxes in a shipments, you want to allocate those costs out against all three of those boxes. So if I ship three boxes and they were $15 for that total shipment, is it 555? So you can take that data and provide it and kind of bring that back to the users in your company to go off and do whatever they need to do with it. And this is uh, just a couple screenshots of where the NMB folks have kind of taken some of that data and exposed that data. And one of the things that's important to note is we've recognized many years ago that when it comes to customer data, um, everyone wants to slice it and dice it slightly differently, right? I, I wanna see it with this and add that column and get rid of this and add over there. So sometimes it's more educating you, as I described earlier, on the data and having you have access to it and showing you where to go and get it. Some people actually want that pre-canned stuff. Give me the report. Uh, maybe you're not as sophisticated or want to break it down. You just need basic stuff. Uh, both can be accommodated and, and you know, work with both ourselves and NMB to kind of work through that. So let me just jump on a couple other things. We've talked about charges throughout it. Well, we do have a freight charge management um, process. So I've talked a little bit about charging and list rates and negotiated rates. And I was just talking a few minutes ago about the data associated with the compliance. But see, some people just, how do you charge your customer? Do you charge your customer? Do you want to keep these charges on file? Um, you know, the, there's a variety of ways through this freight charge management tool to kind of take that data and apply it. You know, so if you're shipping to this customer, Maybe you want to have a free charge, but you're shipping to this other customer who's a partner that does less volume. Maybe you want to give them a fixed cost. So there's a freight charge management tool that's been created and embedded within the D365 workflows. All the way down to you can see where you can start getting into like geocoding and a cost center. You know, I'm shipping all of these shipments that are associated with IT. So subsequently, I want to charge that back to that cost center so that you can 
you can have no of that as you're executing those shipments. And this just gives you kind of an idea of some of those and what it can look like in the missile. In this case, it's the miscellaneous charge calculation rules to where you can set up what you want to do and how you want to do it. So you can kind of get an idea of flat rates and net rates and fixed handling amounts that you can apply to different carriers and services. So some people say when I'm doing my air shipments, I want to do a, a handling charge on top of those because of the expedition, the expedited um, form that I'm shipping. So if I'm shipping that next day air, I'm going to add five extra ducks. This the whole freight charge management tool will help drive that user experience for you. And this is how I was describing earlier about breaking down those charges. So if I get charges back, some people think of just the shipping charge. Well, in reality, the total charge where you have fuel, the base shipping charge, if you're adding things like you know insurance or Saturday delivery, um, hazardous, all of that will come into play and ultimately be now maintained and available to you in D365. So you go back to that reporting where I was talking about, you know, things like, hey, how much money am I spending on fuel? You know, in regards to my transportation, what does that impact to me? Should I negotiate a better fuel charge with the carrier? This can give you some of that information. Parcel invoice reconciliation, you saw this on one of those, just to take you a little bit into this, we've got UPS and FedEx supported today. So, you, you know, I've been focusing really all on outbound, right? Up until this point uh, and all the types of shipments and, and things and features about outbound and, and handling outbound data. Well, what if you get that, that, you know, that bill? So I'm getting that bill from UPS or I'm getting that bill from FedEx. Can I consume that in, into D365? And how can I break that down against, you know, things that I've done previously? Like, have I done my accurate uh, journals? Excuse me. Um, you know, what type of exceptions are, are, are provided in there? Meaning what has come back in that, in that um, bill from UPS and FedEx? So we've also created a nice invoice reconciliation module within the D365 world. So I'm going to switch gears on a couple topics here before we wrap up. Let me just talk about compliance. So I introduced at the very beginning kind of the three main areas, right? The packing and shipping workflows. This is that second area, the compliance workflows. What's commonly understood is that when you're shipping internationally, you got to make sure that you're doing business with, with reputable businesses in, in you know, reputable countries so they're not embargoed. But also though, even domestic shipping, you still need to consider who you're shipping to. So what NMB have done is they've taken and leveraged another Blue Jay solution, our denied party screening solution. And what they've done is expose that within the D365 world. So that if you need to provide and have a compliance program, you can do that. So if you wanna screen your parties as you're, let's say capturing an order, or as you're adding them to the customer master table, you can do that. Um, and it gives you that security of knowing that you're, you, you're doing business with reputable companies and, and people. Um, so if you take a look at, from a engine perspective, to give you an idea, this is a full-blown DPS, denied party screening. So when you look at the content, it's a global content list. So it's a common question of, well, what list do you support? Um, as it's described, there's 80 plus lists globally. And you can do anywhere from, you know, just focusing in on U.S. lists all the way to Singapore and Japan. You can throw other things into the mix. When I say about other things into the mix, you can throw your parties into the mix. So maybe you've got your own denied parties that you don't want to do business with. You can add that into the, the content. There is an optional reverse denied party um, screening method. That would be applicable for known parties. So I, I won't spend too much time on that. But what I would take away is this is a full compliance engine um, that you can leverage to make sure that you're providing the compliance program that's required of your business. So if you're shipping t-shirts, well, then compliance screen may not be as applicable to you. But if you're shipping um, rifles, if you're shipping uh, dual use items, if you're shipping items that could be used inappropriately as far as, um, you know, in a bomb or other types of ways, you should have some level of a compliance screening program in place. If you don't, I would encourage you to think about it because it only takes one bad shipment to go and be and not be screened and for customs to come knocking on the door and to think about it. And again, I'd say that both internationally, of course, but also domestically. 
you've got to think about who you're shipping to domestically and what you're shipping to them. And then a quick little screenshot here, the screening, how you can actually take those uh, parties that are in there and describe what's going on with them. And then if you need to have some type of approval, maybe you get a false positive, you can have an approval of, of actually um, saying that, no, this is a false positive and, and have that um, audit trail as it described on there. It's important, extremely important to have an audit trail when it comes to your compliance screening. And then this is the last screen where we can kind of get into the actual request and some of the responses that can come back. Because you want to be able to know, like, what was the hit? What did you hit on? What list did you hit? And you'd be able to see all of that information within the D365 world. The last area that I'll talk about is around the TMS. So I've been focusing on, right, D365, parcel and LTL, uh, domestic international hazard. We talked about a bunch of workflows, things that are in D365. Well, NMB have also created into the BlueJay TMS a nice integration that allows customers to actually drive all of that order information from D365 over into the TMS. Then within the TMS, you can do things like optimization. You can do planning. You can do the truckload. You can do ocean booking, you know, where you can process those transactions, do your tendering and everything that's applicable to TMS transactions. And then those results can be pushed back into the D365 world. So when you think about it, Often with TMS customers, the workflows are different. You need to actually be in the TMS. It's not like the engine that I described earlier around parcel and LTL. In those workflows, you don't need to be in those solutions. You can be in D365. In TMSs, you often need to be in the TMS. So the strength of what NMB have created is creating integration, being able to seamlessly flow all of that order information over into the TMS so you can have a true what's referred to as order to cash solution. And you can make sure that you can, you know, fulfill all of the tendering requests and EDI transactions that may be required for your shipments in the TMS, but still leverage all of the information. So there's no double entry or anything like that. Anything that happens in D365 flows to the TMS. Anything that happens in the TMS flows back. The other important component is you get access to all of the, the, the um, excuse me, the carriers that have been onboarded within the TMS. We have I would say one of the largest, if not the largest carrier networks on the solution. So it enables customers to feel confident that they're going to get the full support they need from truckload and less than truckload. And as described earlier, um, you know, ocean and rail and air freight that they're going to need. So they can feel that they have all of those other types of shipments covered and that can flow back in. This last slide's a little bit more technical. So I, I, I we just threw this in. This just gives you an idea of the types of interactions that we have between D365 and the TMS. So when you think about the important things like the orders coming over, those getting planned in the TMS, those plans going back, and then all of that status information, making sure that that status information gets pushed back, you can do that. The other important component that the TMS would do for you is of course do everything around settlement. Now I talked about invoices for UPS and FedEx earlier and what D, what we've done in D365. Well, in this case, when you think about, again, truckload, you think about less than truckload, and this would be able to consume all of those specifically into TMS, you can do those, and then those can be pushed back into D365 through the NMB interface that they've created. So there's a lot of great value here in automation of making sure that it can be seamless. We use that term frictionless, right? and specifically around this to make sure that you can just get all of that information over and to be able to get that back. And these are all those touch points as I described that we have. So I'd like to thank you very much for taking the time to listen in. Hopefully you got enough to, to understand the three main areas of capabilities, both the, the D365 parcel and LTL workflows with all of the extra bolt-on features that NMB have done within that world, within that Microsoft world. Also the compliance integration. And then finally that last piece, which was the TMS integration that again, NMB have taken and really enabled any, any process within D365 around transportation to be frictionless so that it can flow. If you're just a parcel guy and you need parcel, they've got you covered. But if you're a full-blown big truckload guy with fleets and you need a, a TMS, 
they've also got you covered for that workflow. So again, thank you very much. Um, I'm Steve Williamson from Blue Jay. Both myself, or both Blue Jay and NMB are here to answer any questions as you guys have them. So we thank you for, uh, for listening. Great, thank you, Steve. Thanks so much for that really informative presentation. And yes, as he mentioned, if you've typed any questions in during this presentation, he and his team will be getting back with you directly. Uh, we did record today's event and we will be making that recording available as well. So thank you all for your time today. And with that, we will end it here. Have a good day, everyone.